Patrol premises. In this competency, you will learn the following. Prepare for patrol. Monitor premises and property. Identify and respond to security risk situation. Prepare for patrol. Locking up or unlocking premises for your employer could be one of your daily functions. It's fairly easy to do this job badly by being lazy or complacent. Before starting your patrol round, remember your keys, communication equipment and any other equipment that may be necessary, such as a torch. Be sure it is all in working order before commencing patrol. Yeah, you're breaking up mate, not need a new battery, over. Roger that out. All patrol tasks, schedules and other relevant assignment instructions need to be obtained and verified with your clients, colleagues or supervisor. These tasks may be patrol sites or zones, time frames or risk response procedures. You may be required to use a range of equipment while on patrol. Communication equipment such as two-way radio, locks, maps and torches are all pieces of equipment that are used regularly by security staff. You need to be familiar with their use and confirm any extra requirements in accordance with your organisational procedures. It's important that any vehicle used for security patrols is regularly maintained and serviced. Any faults or malfunctions must be reported immediately as these may stop you from carrying out your designated tasks. Your personal dress is always important no matter what area of the security industry you work in. Make sure your dress and presentation is maintained at professional standards according to your assignment instructions and organisational requirements. Monitor premises and property. Your duties on patrol will differ from client to client, but in general these duties range from carding, that is leaving a card identifying your company wedged at the point of entry, through to full lock-up patrol and the marking of watchman's clocks. Carding may seem simple, but it's very important as the card indicates to following patrols that the entrance has not been tampered with since the previous patrol. It also reassures the client that the premises is secure. Check all padlocks to make sure they are secure from tampering. Then when you leave the building, check that the infrared signal on the door will not activate. Check your alarm panels before entering the body of the building to give warning of the potential hazards that might be ahead. Try to use a logical and systematic approach to completing this procedure. If you find an office which is still occupied and open, firstly check the person has the authority to be there. Find out how long that person will be staying on the premises. Always be courteous, but remember to ask enough questions to be comfortable that the person is authorised. All security systems in place at your venue must be operated and maintained in accordance with assignment instructions. You'll need to be familiar with the use of these systems. These may include car operated electronic systems, intruder alarm systems and locks and keys. You will need to perform regular systematic personal safety checks throughout the course of your shift. This will ensure all occupational health and safety regulations are being followed and your workplace is kept safe for you and those around you including clients, colleagues and customers. While on patrol, you will need to communicate with different personnel relevant to your specific task. You may be required to use formal communication pathways, organisational communication networks and verbal and non-verbal communication. This should all be explained in your assignment instructions. However, if you are unsure, check with your supervisor. Identify and respond to security risk situation. When patrolling, keep alert to the possible dangers. Potential intruders could be hiding in the area. Always be vigilant for intruders who may be lurking in the general facility. Again, as you go through the premises, be aware of danger. When entering through doorways or corridors, look around cautiously. A technique used by experienced guards is to turn off the lights in the corridor and look for illumination coming from under the office doors. 
If an incident occurs which requires action, such as checking identification, issuing verbal warnings or restraint of persons, make sure your response is carried out within scope of your role, competency and authority. If you attempt to act outside of your skills and knowledge, you may be putting at risk your own safety and the safety of others around you. Sometimes the situation may escalate beyond your own ability or authority. In this case, you may require assistance to reach a resolution. If you do require assistance, you should seek this from the relevant persons. This could be as simple as seeking clarification from your supervisor to requesting backup to help restrain a violent patron. You also need to be mindful of changing circumstances in all aspects of your work. You may need to adjust your response or actions to maintain security at your venue. For example, if there is a problem with the video surveillance in an area of your venue, you may need to perform extra manual checks to ensure security in this section. All reports to supervisors and any other documentation should be prepared in a timely manner, presenting all relevant facts and information. Be sure that incident observations are provided accurately and constructively. You will need to be familiar with completing activity logs, incident reports and vehicle and personnel movement forms.